Hello, this is Broyer, and welcome back to another episode of our Let's Play for the Banner Saga. As we continue our run here on normal difficulty, and we just destroyed a bridge, killed a couple of Varl in the process, and now we got to talk to the Varl King and explain ourselves, I suppose. So, it's probably not going to go well, but let's see what happens. Yorinder, was there not just one thing I demanded of you? Yorinder launches from his throne, pointing an axe in your direction. You've broken this alliance, human. Man and Varl are no friend to each other anymore. This is my reward for allowing men in Einertoft. Do not blame all of humanity for my... There is a bustle from the back of the hall, the Varl part around a shadow figure entering the room. Your runder. Enough. This fight could not have been won. They did what you were unwilling to do. Enough of this insolence. I want these people out of my city. You would gladly let our whole race die? There's nothing glad about it. There are no more Varl being made tomorrow or a thousand years from now. We are all there is and we will all be gone someday. We've destroyed what we have made. What else is left of us? We will leave no trace behind as if we never existed. We have nothing left but ruins. Now get out of what is left of my lands and my city and never return. The guards pull you roughly from the great hall where your caravan has been hastily gathered together. Chapter six. On our bones, of our bones, the hills. Of our bones, the hills. I'm not sure what that means. Well, we're on our way with three days of rations. This is not going to go well. Knocked over my cup. <laughs> Two days of rations. We barely even made it out of line of sight of the city. I don't know what happens when we run out. I'm assuming we just game over. We might be about to lose this whole thing, which is very unfortunate. A well-tended farm with plenty of livestock draws the caravan's attention. Upon your arrival, the farmer and his workers stand defensively within plain sight, crude weapons at the ready. Their crossed arms make their thoughts clear without a word. Uh, offer some kind of trade for the livestock. No big surprise. You'd be more interested in the animals than me and mine, he says and spits. The answer's no, and I'll have these men watching you. So none of my livestock just happens to follow uh, follow you away. Like, I mean, we got to take the food. We, we got to. We can't just game over here. So I think we'll take the food by force. It's very unfortunate. Your warriors step forward, unsheath weapons, and practically growling. The farmer's men blanch and step aside as you choose the hardiest beast. The farmer has the sense to say nothing, though the expression on his face says that you stays with you for quite a while, even after you're away. You catch a glance of Alette, who stares at her feet and does not make eye contact. We, we were going to probably game over. I honestly don't know what happens if we run out of food, but we probably were going to game over. We had to get some food. Sorry, Alette. Stop. A resolute voice calls from somewhere in front of you. The surrounding terrain comes alive with armed fighters surrounding the caravan. No need for bloodshed, the leader says. Leave a couple of wagons to pretend you never even stopped here. Inform them about the coming dredge. I'm guessing you have no idea that the dredge are on their way. You shout, if that's the case, friend, says the leader. We need these supplies more than ever. Without even a glance to his men, the attack begins. All right, well, I guess we're going to have to defend ourselves here. We really need to rest. Goodness, this is bad. I mean, can Ivor actually fight one-handed? All right, you all with only one day injuries, I guess you guys come back in. Honestly, we're probably just going to go with what we got here. Except we're going to bring Ivor in for sure. I guess Onif can come in here. He's at least not injured at the moment. We really have to rest up, though. Yeah, this is bad. All right. Uh, we don't have enough for a promotion, do we? Ah, uh, we actually do. And promoting Rook probably is a real... I mean, he's just one of our best guys, right? Yeah, we're going to promote him up. Oh, can I not work? Oh, I just I didn't hit the wrong button. Uh, we're going to give him a little bit more... Shield break, I suppose. And then we'll give him a bit more. I should just give him some more shield in general. All right, Rook, level four. It means he can run this. Actually, that's probably pretty solid for him. Plus three break. And then we can give plus two strength, plus two armor per rest. Let's give you plus two strength. I think that's going to be pretty solid for you. All right, we'll go with this. We're not the best setup, but it's something. Actually, you 
15% dodge strength. I mean, any one of you guys dodge, one of you ladies dodge might not be a bad idea. You still have the uh, arm strength. Okay, we're going to give you the dodge. Maybe you can stay alive a little bit longer. Okay, we're going to go with this. Hopefully this is going to work. Mm -hmm. Alright, I think you're good over there. I think we're going to move the other two humans back a little bit here. We're going to move you up to be able to engage them. Something like this, maybe? Actually, we're going to leave Rook over here. I think something of that nature would be okay. Let's go with this. All right, you need to just face, face off against this guy right away, I think. We're going to come on this side, so this guy maybe potentially has to go a little bit further ahead. Or further around, I should say. Definitely knock out some shield real quick. All right, so he was able to get to us, but that's okay. All right, you're going to just come up here and, I guess, attack this guy that's off by himself. Honestly, just pure damage at this point is probably the right move. I don't know if it matters who we go after here. So we're going to come over here to you since you haven't attacked yet. We'll see if we can weaken you a little bit through first. Run through is... Run through enemies doing armor break damage, then hit the target from behind. Okay, we can't do that from here, so never mind. Uh, we'll just do a normal, normal attack here. I, mean, I can get rid of some armor, but I actually think we're going to be able to do enough damage here to just whittle you down a little bit, make you a bit weaker here. That guy's extremely strong. We would definitely like to make our way towards him. So I think what we do is we move here, but shoot her. All right, same kind of thing. We want you to kind of start moving that direction. We'll shoot her, I guess. Same kind of thing. Keep moving this direction. Uh, we can shoot you at two. You're at four. Let's shoot the guy with four. I'm just going to shoot some shield then. Now, this guy's... Definitely the most dangerous at this point, I think. All right, we're going to move you up to try and get some damage on him. Now, I guess we'll do some shield damage to you, my friend. A lot of shield break. Wow. Um... Hmm. We kind of need to make our way over this side of things. So I guess we're going to move over here. We're probably just going to kill this guy at this point. Just because we don't have much else to hit. We don't have a way to engage anybody. So we'll just move up. Call that good enough. Ouch. I mean, Rook can move over here and do a combo attack against him. That should, I mean, I like the thing up, but I guess it's hard to see sometimes. Uh, he could also move around here. No, I think we're going to move over here. I think we're going to do a combo attack against this guy. This guy is currently the most dangerous guy. That's not bad. Pull him down a little bit. Hopefully we can avoid any more injuries here. Right, so we got two guys at seven. We want at two. I think we're going to knock out the guy over here at seven that we can actually get double damage on. 
Alternatively, we could have stopped one turn sooner and done a pierce through, but I always forget about that. Oh no. You are not doing well, are you? Uh, it looks like she's going to attack next. Which if I kill her, he'll attack next, which is not ideal. But I guess if we move you back, we can at least get some sort of shot on you. Not great. All right, I think at this point we go ahead and just get rid of you. The others are getting a little bit lower. All right, no surprise there. She's still going to take an injury, but not much we can do about that. You're going to move up and you're just going to knock him out. Not too bad. We, we could have hopefully saved her, but it's the section not bad. <clears throat> Bit of renown. How many people do we have that have like one injury? We have three people on one day. Or actually, I'm sorry, no, this is the same people. <laughs> uh, so we have three people on one day, four people on one day. So yeah, probably should rest one day. I know this is very risky, but it just feels like we're going to keep getting into battles. So we've got to figure something out here. So just one day of, of resting. Hopefully it doesn't end up costing us. I honestly don't know. This, this is getting very hairy. It appears that large figures following from the direction of Einertoft. Uh, Oddleaf watches intently before finally saying, They have a cart. I can hear it. You slow to get a better view and spy a small caravan of Varl. Eventually they catch up. Greetings, Ivor. It's been quite a while since we talked, hasn't it? I know you. Ubin, never imagined you'd be one to defy the king. What made you leave? Someone had to. What do you mean? Bellor is heading this way. Already? How is that possible? A group of Varl from Wormtoe showed up around the back of Einertoff, the long way. Bellor and his army chased them across the summer path, they said. Past Wormtoe? That doesn't make sense. Bellor was at the bridge. He must have doubled back after that serpent appeared. While we fought on the bridge, he left half his forces around to approach Einertoff from behind. The attack on the bridge was a feint. Don't let anyone tell you the dredge aren't clever. Einertoft will fall within the day. Maybe not. He's following you. I thought one of you might know why. We exchange nervous glances, but nobody speaks up. Must be me, then. Is there someone, something I don't know? That's quite a grudge he's holding if he's coming for you, Ivor. It doesn't matter. Our only chance is to get Sigurholm. Judah will know what to do. We'll join you. I come bearing supplies and warriors who would be happy to kill a dredge or two, I believe. Okay, well, supplies definitely came in the nick of time. A few more Varl, some more Renown. That's not bad. The caravan stops at a split in the road. Ahead, the path leading to Sigurholm veers off into the hills, which are now swimming with familiar black shapes. Dredge that way too, Gris grimaces Ivan. The summer path leads straight to Sigurholm. While taking the main road will add several days. They're everywhere by... They're every way by now. To, replies Ubin. I suggest we go around past Hawkstorp. Um, so we're going to risk it. We're going to go around. I hate to say it, you, you tell Ivan, but I'm not willing to walk into Swarm of Dredge anymore. Juno will have to wait. You're, you turn toward the long round around Hawkstorp instead, hoping you're, you've saved lives in the process. Got a little bit of renown for that. That's not bad.
The caravan consists of more clansmen than you ever expected. Accusations of stolen chickens, missing heirlooms, and concerns over daughter's virtues are the sort of thing you hear relentlessly. Even fighters complain of spreading too thin to protect everyone. Or more cancel to handle these. Usually cancels are, you know, that split up the problem. Split up the divide and conquer. Or uh, maybe just delegate is probably the right way to say it. You select a few older members to solve everyday issues, but infighting neuters their progress. Other members feel they could do a better job. Ultimately, when it, while it buys some time, the council dissolves, tired of thankless and demanding work. Well, great. We tried. You enter a village of miners who want to know what has been happening recently between the rumblings of the quake and sightings of dredge in the distance. As you look around, you see a lot of elderly and children, and you know that these people will only be more mouths to feed. I guess we're going to let them make their own decision. You welcome anyone who wishes to join Caravan. Many do, while others choose to stay in their homes and see things through. You wish them luck. Yay, just a bunch of clansmen. Great. Obsidian Bell. All right, we are going to, I mean, one right now and get six food. It's hard to say no to that. We're going to go up to like nine days of food. Still have 20 right now left over. I think that's going to be okay. Let's go look at our heroes. All right, Alette has a promotion. Ivor has a promotion. I feel like Ivor is going to be pretty critical for what we're doing. So we're going to promote Ivor. More armor break sounds like a great idea. Just more of that sounds like a good idea as well, to be honest. Oh, we have four points. How did I miss that we had so many points available? I should go check my other guys. Um, I, I just don't assume we're getting two points this whole time. Apparently, we're probably getting more than that. Well, don't I feel silly? Uh, we're going to grab more strength for sure then, and we'll grab some more armor. Kind of balance that out a little bit. We can take a level four thing, but I think we're okay with what we got. I think we're going to level you up, too, because I think you're going to be very critical for us going forward, unless we have another... We haven't had another one join us, have we? We have not. Of course, you're currently injured, which is not ideal. All right. Two points available. More armor break seems like a great idea, and just more of this, I guess. We really need to get you rested up a bit. If we were last at least one more day, we'd get a whole bunch more people back. All right, let's check through everybody to make sure nobody has any points available. Well, you wouldn't, but anyway, you don't, you don't. Okay, we're good. I was just making sure. Apparently, Ivan has eight points available. I did not realize that. Well, then we will definitely give you some more of a lot of things. Something like that, probably. I mean, you can't get any more, so that is all your points. I actually think I'm mostly okay with that. All right, let's... And actually, you can take this thing. I mean, I don't know how much armor is going to help you, but you're the only one who can equip it right now anyway. We're going to rest one day. Might end up being a terrible idea, but we've got to get more people back. So we got a lot more people available now. Hopefully, that works to our benefit. Make sure nobody else... It's level two or higher, has any points. Okay, and you're only got one injury, so we can definitely fight with you, I think, at this point. I guess we're going to bring Ivan back into the mix. Anybody that's level three to earn it, I'll be able to use that. All right, let's, let's leave, I guess. Look at that, shouts one of your clansmen. The caravan stops to watch Dredge pulling into the village you just passed through. I hope anyone who stayed behind got out alive, says Alette. But you have your doubts. Well, we tried to get them to join us. They're coming, says Ivor, pointing out a line of Dredge leaving the village and marching towards you. As you watch, the Dredge in front falls over. Then the one behind it falls as well. You hear a twang to your left. Nid, the archery student of Oddleafs, 
who you recall definitely shooting a snow rabbit, is firing arrows down the hill. Another dredge toggles. That's incredible, says Oddly, squinting. But we should get out of here. Odds right, let's go. Return to the village, look for survivors. You know what? Um... Uh... No, we'll, we'll agree with her. But why don't you come with us next? the next time you want to try out that bow, you tell Ned, who nods a smile on her face. As you're nodding off to sleep, shouts of fire pull you back to attention. Flames quickly consume a supply wagon in a few tents. A woman cries out, my boy, and points to a burning tent close to the outlying borrow. Two of the giants are motionless, staring at the spreading fire with terror in their eyes. Uh, go in after the boy yourself. We're going to be nice. Wrapping your cloak around you, the smoke, flames, uh, and tent become a blur as you grab the boy and slice through the back canvas with your hunting knife. You meet the ashamed look of the older Varl while the crowd cheers on your heroic act. Unfortunately, the supply wagon did not make it. Oh my... What in the depths was that about, you mutter to yourself. Something about the fire, Odlik tells you. I've heard of this before. They don't like it. It doesn't change what happened, you think to yourself. Well, this is not good. Godstone of Dunder passes around you. In the frozen climate here, it looks like the rock has split and is falling apart, held together only by the deep snow. Curiously, when standing between the stones, the wind drops off completely, picking up once again once you've passed through. I almost wonder if we should rest here for the night, says Ivor, who seems to have noticed the same thing. With all the snow around it, the dredge might not even be able to find us. Now we've got to just keep going. We can't stop. If the weather changes, we may suddenly find ourselves freezing to death, you reply. There's some wisdom to your words, and so the caravan continues on. Alright, what happens when we run out of supplies? We're about to find out. I mean, can we make it here in time? We don't have any renown to buy anything. Up ahead, a scout shouts, some giant haul... But it's empty. You approach the structure, but recognize none of the markings. The walls seem unsteady at best. Finally, sleeping beneath the roof, you overhear. Several families begin unpacking. Look for any clues about why it's abandoned. Whoever left here may have had good reason, you tell the caravan. But after a few tiring hours of searching for clues, you have no answers. The frustration of waste time is apparent on the clansmen's faces. All right, sleep in the old hall. Sure, why not? Cheers erupt as people flood into the building. A borrow leans against a supporting pillar. It cracks and brings down a portion of the massive roof. Oh, good. Crushing a number of clansmen beneath it. Sadly, the rubble is too deep to recover the bodies, and you leave the building behind with regret. Great. All right, is it game over? No, we just... I guess we just get miserable. In the distance, Hawkstorp smolders like an old campfire. Even from here, you can see black figures shambling through it. That looks like a dead town, remarks Ivor, confirming your impressions. There's usually survivors. Oddly for mind you. We're going to check it out. We're going to see if we can find some supplies. I hope others will do the same for me. Dredge or nothing we haven't faced before. Ivor grunts, but otherwise says nothing. Besides, it might throw Bellower off the scent a bit. You head a day's march out toward Hawkstorp. Okay. I didn't realize it was going to be a day's march, but whatever. As soon as you step foot in this small town, you think you've made a mistake. It is thoroughly littered with corpses. Within moments, the dredge are upon you as though you stirred up an angry hornet's nest. You draw your weapons. Great. All right, we're going to leave you guys in the mix here. I guess we'll put Ivor first just because he might be able to do a bit more damage. We're going to put Rook first here, I think. I think that looks good. Oh, we have Nid. Nice. Bird of Prey. Loses longbow to shoot further than other less experienced archers, and she always hits her mark. 
Bird of Prey makes it possible for her to strike units be before they are able to get a range attack. It allows her passive puncture to be used against more enemies who have been out of range from a normal shot. Okay. Interesting. I might actually like her over Oddleaf, and I might actually like her first so she can just get some sort of shot off. All right, we're going to start something like this. If I can keep her back and get some shots off. Still, that might be a really good combo. All right, Oddleaf has this. We're going to go ahead and just give that to you. And we'll go with this. Hmm. I mean, we definitely want to put her pretty far away. Honestly, we're going to put all of our archers. Or actually, we're going to put, we'll put you there. We'll put Rook there. And these other two guys can kind of stay in the middle. I think this is fine. They're a little bit further away. Hopefully, we can engage before they get into trouble. All right, so how far away can you shoot? Fairly far, but not, not necessarily where we can get a good shot off here. Oh, you might be able to shoot one of these guys. Let's see, how many tiles was it? One, two, three. One, two, three. So yeah, right here. Should still keep you safe. But in theory, get a good bird of prey shot off. All right. Well, it didn't do much, but every little bit's going to help. And obviously, we would have done no damage had we done nothing, right? I mean, that, that's something at least. Um, We can get here with only spending one thing and still do six points, although he already moved. So in theory, this would be the better move here to get... A guy who has not moved yet, taken down a little bit more. Let's come over and just wallop this guy really hard. Okay, this guy is the next to move. So if we move up and do a big chunk of damage to him, at least he won't do much back. So I guess this is the right move. Really weaken this guy before he attacks here. Okay, so this guy is actually the next to act. And doing some damage to him would be a good idea. I mean, these guys have already acted, so we don't really need to do much to them. I think moving up to try to get an attack on this guy might be an okay move, although I'm a little worried that we're just going to be in a range of him just walk, walking up and just smacking us. So maybe we actually move away. I mean, we can move up a little bit. No, but that's just going to put us in a bad spot over here. I think this is still ultimately our best move. It's not... I don't like it. I mean, we can do a bunch of shield damage, I suppose. What's the range on your ability? One, two, three, okay. One, two, three. That guy's obviously the worst of all of this. And I have not been able to get into position to get any sort of shot on him. All right, looks like you could actually move up and get a pretty big chunk of damage on this guy. Now, I guess we'll go with that. Really weaken this guy a lot. Okay. 
Okay, you could just straight up kill him. Which would be awesome. Can you bird of prey this guy? You cannot. Only if we move up one. Um... When do you move? Uh, sorry, I want to see. You are the next to move. And this guy's after that. We don't want to kill this guy because... Then this guy will move sooner and that's not really good for us. I really don't want to move her up because she's so weak. I mean, I can move over here and hope that I can get a shot off on one of these guys. It's probably the right move. Get her away from the front a little bit. Yeah, I was going to say, we can probably get a shot off on this guy. It's not ideal, because it might... I don't think it'll kill him, though. No, there's no way. It's just, she just doesn't do that much damage. All right, we got two guys doing this. Okay, great. Well, I definitely would like to move over here and just kill this guy now. Even though I don't really want to kill people, I think we can't let this finish. All right, you really need to move up and try to do something to this guy, I guess. So we'll do some shield damage. I mean, he's still going to hurt us big time. All right. We do need to kill this guy off. I think uh, she can finish him off. So you just need to move up to wherever you're going to do some decent damage here. Probably doing something to this 14 over here. I mean, the 22 is still super dangerous, right? But if we move away from him, he just has to keep moving towards us. So maybe this is okay. I mean, I guess I can do just a bunch of shield damage here. I may just... Move around, get on the other side of him, and just shoot him a little bit here. Or I could shoot this guy, probably. Any of these guys would be fine. Apparently, if I move up, I could actually do five points of damage to this big boy. Which probably is a really good move. Or I could just sit where I'm at, and... Uh, the problem, if I, if I shoot him, then he'll zap to this guy. I guess we're going to shoot this guy. Try to weaken him a bit. Alright, you gotta finish this guy off because we don't want him to finish what he's doing. The more this will put her in range of just dying to him, but we've just we gotta get rid of this guy, I think. Alright, I need to start doing some damage to this big boy over here. Or I can move up and do five points of damage to that guy. That seems like a reasonably good idea. Oh wow, I'm way over time. I just realized the time. Alright, sorry, let me finish this one. This battle. And then we'll probably call it there. Alright, you're just gonna have to engage. We, we gotta... Well, I could start playing to keep away a little bit longer, trying to weaken him a bit more. But I'm afraid if we don't engage that we're just going to get into a position where he just attacks one of our guys and hurts us more than we want. Honestly, I think we've got to do as much damage as we can, although... Let's buff that a little bit. Let's just do as much damage as we can. Bring him down within a bit more of a, a reasonable range here. Yeah, I mean, he only did three points of damage, so that's, that's, that's acceptable. All right, we're going to move over here. We're going to kill this guy, I think, at this point. Well, we're not going to quite kill him, but we're going to do some damage to him. All 
I mean, we gotta get rid of this guy. So, even though this feels like a wasted shot, I don't want him to get off his, uh, whatever his ability is. Summons an ally? Yeah, we don't want him to summon an ally. You have to move up one to be able to zap this guy, which probably is the right move. I was gonna say he's gonna welcome just smack us, unfortunately. Surprised he just deals shield damage there. Uh, we can blow this a little bit, get a little bit more damage here. Any damage we can do to that guy is going to help out. You no, know, I think we are going to do the shield damage just so we can hopefully. Finish this guy off next turn. I mean, we want to finish this guy off for sure, right? What you kind of need to do with him right now. He's not going to be able to do it. You know what? We're going to get an ally. We're going to get another mob in here, I think, no matter what we do. So we're going to kill one of these two at this point, I guess. Looks like this is the next act. So we'll kill this guy just because we want him to at least have another turn, hopefully. Oh, the page just whacks him, I was going to say. Oh, you only did shield damage. And right, we don't have enough willpower for that. Which willpower does it take? If we give you a little bit more willpower. All right, you could do an arc lightning here. Oh, it's going to hurt her. No, 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 no. I forgot about that they were close. Ah, uh, that's unfortunate. Apparently that disrupts him though. I'm not sure if I expected that. Oh, he no, he finished the summoning. Okay, fair enough. Should be able to handle this reinforcement pretty easily, though. Other than him doing massive chunks of damage to her. That was not ideal. Actually, what am I doing? Um, no, you don't have any willpower. I was going to say we can move you up and do a little target attack thing. Kill this guy now. Hmm. We'll try it. 50 50. Alright, we got it. So you're just gonna whack him, aren't you? I'm just gonna do shield damage. Wow, I'm surprised that they're just doing that. Maybe reducing their strength is really making a much bigger difference than I expected.
Oh, it was only 50-50. Boo. It's a little bit better here. Let's give it take a 70% chance to do some damage there. There we go. Alright, now it's time to finish some guys off, I think. Long episode, but I got in the middle of the battle and I didn't want to stop. <laughs> Victory! The town is nothing but ghosts and now covered in more dredged bodies, too. Remarkably, as you're about to leave, you find an old man sitting quietly in a tattered market stall with a couple items in front of him. He humps to himself as if nothing were wrong. It seems to be in shock. You clansmen gather him into a caravan before you leave. I mean, is there any supplies we can gather? What? Did I hit the map? Oh, I hit the map, not the market. I was like, I was confused for a second there. Oh, right now it gets 10. Okay, well, we'll definitely be grabbing some supplies. I mean, we've got to grab as much as we can carry, I think, at this point. All right, we're going to go ahead and call it there, though. I went a bit over, quite a bit over, a lot over. I could have split this into two videos, but that's okay. Every once in a while, a long one's not going to hurt anything. But I do appreciate you guys watching. May God bless you, and I hope you join me again next time. Thank you, and goodbye. I wanted to give a special shout-out to the following channel members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel.